this video i will discuss construction of character tables using cartesian coordinates usually uh, character tables are constructed by utilizing some results of the great orthogonality theorem but here i want to show you that character table can be constructed in a much simpler way for example let us consider the C4V point group, C4V. An object belonging to such a point group is this, a square pyramid. It has one four-fold rotation axis like this, passing through the vertex and uh, through the middle of the square base. And it has uh, four vertical planes. One plane passes through this vertex and bisects the opposite edges like this. One vertical plane is like this, bisecting the pyramid into two halves and passing through the vertex. Similarly, another is like this, vertical plane like this. Another is like this along the diagonal, construct a vertical plane through this uh, vertex passing through the vertex and through the uh, diagonal. Similarly, another is this. These two are called, these two diagonal planes, diagonally passing planes are called sigma d planes and these two are um, sigma v planes. Therefore, the symmetry operators of C4V are identity, then C4, fourfold rotation axis, then C4 squared, that is C2, 180 rotation, then C4 cube, then uh, sigma V1, sigma V2, sigma D1, and sigma D2, reflection operators. I will uh, represent these, oper uh, these operators by matrices using Cartesian coordinates of a general point as basis. Suppose this is uh, this is a coordinate system. These are this is a right-handed coordinate system. X, Y, and Z axis. Z axis is perpendicular to the plane of the paper, and X and Y axis are on the plane of the paper. This is an arbitrary point with coordinates X, Y, Z. This is at a distance R from the origin. If you drop a perpendicular from P to the X, Y plane, the height from the xy plane is z and this is x this is y you you know all this to simplify the task we redraw this diagram here this is the x axis this is y axis z axis is not shown but i have used this symbol here this means a four-fold axis of symmetry. This square, dark square indicates a four-fold axis of symmetry passing perpendicular to the plane of the paper. The sigma v plane, sigma v1 plane is this x-axis containing x-axis and z-axis. Sigma v1 is actually sigma vxz. Similarly, sigma v2 is, is a plane, vertical plane containing the y-axis and the z-axis sigma v y z plane and sigma d planes are like this one is like this and another is like this sigma d1 sigma d2 all are vertical planes and all intersect at the z axis now looking at uh, looking at uh, the coordinates x y z of a point we know uh, we can say that there is no symmetry operation of C4V that can change Z. If you carry out rotation operation, X and Y will go on changing, but Z will not change. Z is the height from the XY, uh, XY plane. This will not change if this, this point P is rotated about the Z axis, describing a cone like this. Z will remain unchanged. Similarly, reflections, uh, since the planes are vertical, since the planes are vertical, you, may, you can imagine a vertical plane like this, 
then P will go over to that side, but its height from the uh, from the x y plane will not change. So neither the rotations nor the reflections can change z, but x and y they go on changing. Uh, we therefore come to a very important observation. No symmetry operation of C4V changes Z. X and Y transform among themselves. X transforms to Y, Y transforms to X and so on. And Z remains separate. Therefore, if you consider X, Y, Z as a whole basis set, then you can partition this set into two parts. One part contains X and Y. Uh, symmetry operations on X will give you a mixture of X and Y. But in that mixture, Z will never come up. Similarly, symmetry operations on, will, on Z will give you Z back. Therefore, Z transforms independently of X and Y. This makes such a partition possible. From this partition, we can conclude that, that there is at least one irreducible uh, representation of C4V with dimension 2 whose basis set will be x, y together and there is one irreducible representation of C4V of dimension 1 and having z as basis. Let us see how uh, let us see how I will now carry out the symmetry operations on x, y, x and y separately. I am not considering z for the time being. C4 on x. This x is the x coordinate of the point. If you apply C4 on that point, it will rotate. And what will be the value of a new value of x? Look at this diagram. Here we see that this positive part of the x-axis goes to the positive part of the y-axis by a 90 degree rotation, anti-clockwise rotation about the z-axis. If you rotate this part about the z-axis anti-clockwise to 90 degree, you will get this part uh, transformed to this part. So x transforms to y. Therefore, sigma of C4 on X will give you Y. And on similar 90 degree rotation, this positive part of Y axis comes to the negative part. And anti-clockwise rotation by 90 degree will give you this line segment from this line segment. Therefore, Y comes to minus X. So our result is C4X is Y and C4Y is minus X. I can write it in this way. C4X is X, uh, Y. Y means 0 into X plus 1 into Y. And C4Y is minus X, which means C4Y is minus 1 into X plus 0 into Y. I am not taking Z in this com combination because Z behaves independently of X and Y. Now these two equations can be written in a matrix form like this. Consider a column matrix formed by X, Y. This is a column matrix. If you apply C4 on this, the result again will be a column matrix. The result will be this matrix X, Y multiplied from the left by this matrix 0, 1, minus 1, 0. This line comes from here. The coefficients 0, 1 are written here row wise. The basis functions are written uh, column wise and these coefficients, transformation coefficients are written row wise 0, 1. And second part is obtained from minus 1, 0. By simple rule of multiplication, 0 into x plus 1 into y is this result. Simply, similarly, minus 1 into x plus 0 into y is this result. So, these two can be written in a matrix form like this. Therefore, this matrix, 
0, 1, minus 1, 0. This matrix is the matrix representation of C4 operator with x, y as basis. And what is the trace of this matrix? It is 0 plus the sum of the diagonal elements. 0 plus 0 equal to 0. Let us consider another operator of C4V. I now come to C4 cube operator. For ready reference, I have redrawn that diagram here. C4 cube X means 270 degree rotation anticlockwise. What happens to X? This part upon 3 pi by 2 rotation will come over to this part. This part here. So X becomes minus y. C4 cube x becomes minus y. Similarly y, this part of the y axis comes to this part. So y comes to minus x by a 3 pi by 2 rotation about z axis. So C4, C4 3 times on y will give x. Then by the same way as before, we have C4 3 times x is 0 into x plus, one, uh, plus minus 1 into y. And C4 3 times y is, minus, is 1 into x plus 0 into y. And in matrix form, the result is C4 cube xy equal to this matrix collected from these coefficients 0, minus 1, 1, 0, xy. So this is the matrix form, matrix representation of C4 cube with XY as basis. And, and what is the trace of this matrix? This is also the zero. The compare. We have we earlier obtained matrix for C4 as 0, 1, minus 1, 0. And now for C4 cube we get 0, minus 1, 1, 0. These two matrices are different, but their traces are the same. 0, 0. Different matrices but equal trace. This is expected because C4 and C4 cube are known to be operators of the same conjugate class and such operators are represented by matrices with equal trace or equal character. Trace is also called character. Therefore we have obtained uh, characters for two operators I now, for more explanation, I now construct another uh, matrix for a reflection operator. Consider sigma d2 operation. Sigma d2 plane is drawn here. It is a vertical plane passing uh, through this point and containing the z-axis. Passing uh, through the region in between the axes. Now, what is sigma d2 x? x upon, if this plane is a mirror, then this part will come here. x will become minus y. And this part will come here. y will become minus x. Therefore, sigma d2, sigma d2 is minus y equal to 0 into x plus minus 1 into y and sigma d2y equal to minus x that is minus 1 into x plus 0 into y therefore matrix for sigma d2 with with x y as basis will be 0 minus 1 minus 1 0 trace is again 0 similarly we can find out that all the reflection operations will have trace uh, character 0 Thus, we get a two-dimensional irreducible representation of C4V. Why irreducible? Because by no means you can reduce the size of this matrix further. X will always be coupled with Y. Y will always be coupled with X by carrying out the C4V symmetry operations. Therefore, this matrix cannot be reduced further. This is irreducible. And, and similarly, all the matrices are of size 2 by 2 if x, y is, if the set x, y is taken as basis. We write this 
two dimension, a, a two dimensional representation, irreducible representation, is rep, means irreducible representation of C4B is like this. Here the point group name is written, chi means character, then in this row I have written down the symmetry operators class wise, E, identity, then 2C4, this means C4 and C4 cubed. These two operators have the same character. So here we, have, we write 2C4. Then C2. If you can construct the matrix for C2 in that way, you will find that trace will be equal to minus 2. 2 sigma V operators will have character 0. 2 sigma D operators will also have character 0. So 2 identity. Identity is always represented by the unit matrix 1001 in this case. If the basis set is of size n by n, then unit and identity operator is denoted by represented by n by n unit matrix. Here the, the basis set size is 2 by 2. We have two basis functions x, y together. Therefore, I, identity operator will be represented by 1001. Diagonal, diagonal elements will sum up to 0, uh, sum up to 2. Therefore, this is the set of characters of a one-dimensional, a two-dimensional irreducible representation of C4V. We have used an arbitrary name, gamma1 here. This will be replaced by Mulliken symbols later on. And in this column, we write the basis. Here, the basis is the set XY. This bracket is necessary. This indicates that these two functions or vectors, vectors, they act together. If you don't write these, these brackets, then it will mean that X is a separate basis, Y is another separate basis, and so on. It is a two-dimensional representation. The basis set will contain two elements. And now consider Z. It is a simple, simple task. For all R, for all symmetry operators, RZ is Z. All the symmetry operators keep Z unchanged. Therefore, this Z is, can be written as 1 into Z. So matrix for all the symmetry operators will be singleton matrices of size 1 by 1. They will be written as 1 within square bracket. This is the matrix for operator. And character, character is also 1 because there is only one element. This is itself the diagonal element. Therefore, all the operators will have character 1. We write this in this way. The name is gamma, another name, gamma 2. Below E, we write 1. Below 2C4, we write 1. Below all the operators, we write 1. 1, 1, 1, 1. And in, the, in this column, representing basis functions, we write Z. This is another one-dimensional irreducible representation of C4V. And you can readily recognize that this is the totally symmetric representation. Totally symmetric means that the basis function uh, is totally symmetric. It is never changed by any symmetry operation. In this way, we have got two reducible representations. There may be more. So we need to consider other functions of uh, other, other functions like quadratic functions, rotational vectors involving the Cartesian coordinates. Those things will be dealt with in, in the next video. We have got only two irreducible representations.